Right, this is Sheila, 2013, taking us back to October 2007, when I still had my VW camper, and I was living in Weston, but went back down to Ilfracombe in Devon to do some more family tree research for Zara. There was a, quite a lot of records held in the uh, local museum there, and there was also a, a lo lovely large graveyard um, just on the outskirts up high of Ifrakum of um, quite a few relatives of her connected to William Henry Barbary. Um, so here I am getting ready to go off to Devon. So we're back to 2007. Right, it's the 10th of October. And I'm off to Ifrakum again to go to the museum to look more into the archives and also just several villages that I need to um, investigate as well. Paracoom, Berenaba, Kentisbury, North Ho, and some others. Plus, I've got the bigger graveyard in um, Ilfracombe to do. And I'm also I'm thinking about going to Barnstable one day to find the museum and the archives and all that there as well. So that's the plan at the moment. They took three hours before they even looked at it. They took five minutes to look at it. Said it needed um, a, ro a rocker gasket, a gasket for the rocker cover or something. Sounds like a horrible big job where you've got to strip the whole bloody engine down. I don't know though. They said it cost about 150 quid. They, they told me just to carry on driving it like this. But I mean, it's costing a lot of money putting all the oil in. Anyway, I'm going to take it to the garage that had its MOT in next week because in two weeks' time I want to go to Cambridge before the winter sets in. And at Cambridge, I mean, I will be doing some touring around, but the biggest trip is going to be up the motorways, past the, up, you know, M25, all that, so I need the van to be in a reasonable condition. So I need to get that assessed properly. Um, I reckon I overloaded it with oil myself, and I and I do wonder whether the little tap underneath where you drain oil has become loose. You know, because they didn't seem to bother the. They weren't interested. To be quite honest, all they're interested in is changing exhausts and tyres, because that's what makes the money, and it's quick. Anyway, enough of that. I'm off to Devon. It's supposed to be good weather coming. I'm going to make my way to a place called Morso first because there was a lover. I see there was a lover. You know, there was a lover in there, and there's a campsite there. And I'm just wondering if it if it's open and if it might be better in regards to um, toilet facilities.
in memory of John Lovering, who died November the 10th, 1860, aged 73. Also to the memory of Charlotte Lovering, wife of the above, who died July the 2nd, 1873, aged something. It's all naught. you can't see that. It could be 80 or something. So there's a Lovering straight away. There's a great big Irwin slab here. In memory of Mary, wife of Joseph Irwin of Mortho, who died July the 26th, 1864, age 58. Also, another memory of Joseph Irwin Smith Code, C O A D, grandson of the above, who sweetly fell asleep January the 20th, 1870, aged 10 months. Also, memory of Anna Maria Goad, 1861 to 1876, and Robert Elliot Code or Goad and Joseph Irwin himself, born 1803, died 1888. That's a, that's a big Irwin plaque. There's quite a few Irwin graves in here actually. We've got Elizabeth, wife of William Irwin, gent. She departed this life December 7th, 1773, age 42. Also William, the eldest son, who departed this life January the 5th, 1774, aged 20. Also John, their second son, who departed this life January the 29th, 1774, aged 15. Also William Irwin Gent, who died January the 21st, 1779, aged 60. This stone was erected and the old stone fixed on the south side of the tomb in 1902 by Mrs. Shalakum and Mr. John S. Milton. There's a very old stone which is propped up. Very old, slaty one. I'll take a picture of these. In fact, this is Irwin ground, big time. We've got in memory of William Irwin, yeoman, late of Warcom in the parish of Ephraim, who died at his son-in-law, Ephraim Harris, home, Coo Martin, September the 28th, 1880, aged 90 years and nine months. And then you've got, next to that other one I've done, that William one, you've got George Irwin, who died May the 5th, 1883, aged 88, also honorer, honorer, wife, died 31st of May, 1888, aged 88. Also, George, something of the above. George and Irwin, and son of William Irwin Gent, who died in 1852, age 88. They all died at the age 88, that lot. So the whole of this plot is Irwin's and Shalakums. They seem to be linked somehow in Warsaw. This is Irwin country. And beloved wife of William Conover, who died 1870-71. William Conover, who died 1873-74. The Conover rings a bell somewhere. Chug, Gammon, and Wakelier are also quite common here. It's a very old one, 1779, Edward Lewis, who died age 30. Robert Tucker, died in 1832, aged 39, could be 29. That's Jane Alicle. Well, we found one Barbary and loads of Irwins. They don't lock them in Cornwall. They do here. There's lots of walks around here, apparently. It's in a coombe. Lots of walks all around. It's surrounded by hills, and there's a lighthouse apparently. There might even be another cemetery yet. Right, I've been, been around the church. There's a few graves in there, but uh, the main cemetery's at the top here. I also um, took a picture of the old schoolhouse. It's really quite an old village. And apparently there's a cemetery up here. I didn't know about. 
it. I've already found Erwin as a Leverance. Well, I'm coming up the brow of a hill now. And I can see the sea with the sun resting on it. Not resting on it, it's like a pathway. It's really, really beautiful. Even in a little village like this, I had to pay two quid to park. I'm rooming down. <coughs> Well, I found Vera Emily Lovering. Yeah, she died in 1960. 22nd of March, age 41. <coughs> it's a lovely spot to have a grave. So we're on the hill, and all you can see is the sea stretching out. I found a Pierce family. Fancy that. Nothing memory of Mabel E. Pierce died April the 7th, 1939, age 48, and William J. Pierce, father of the above, who died 1939, October the 7th, age 81, and Lucy Pierce, his beloved wife, who died 1946, age 86, William James Pierce, who died 1953, age 44. Then you've got Ethel Mary Pierce, who died. Ortho was mentioned in some of the um, censuses and other stuff I got. So I had to come here because there's somebody from Zara's lot that's more so related. And we've already found a um, Barbary's. Loverings and Irwins. And they're all related. God, this is beautiful here. God, what a lovely place if you're going to have to go somewhere. This is so warm, but it's so peaceful here. Oh, pretty. Well, I, mean, I don't know what it's like when the, the sea's crashing down on you. Surrounded by like gorse and heathland as well. well. I might not find anyone else now. Could have been just that episode in their lives where they lived in the village for a while. So the love rings, there was one William Irwin who was um at King Martin when he passed away. I'm looking around. I've got to keep an eye on the, the light now, because um, it must be going on for after six now. When I finish this, I'm going to go and have a pint of Guinness in that pub. A grounded wreck or whatever it is, a ship aground. I'm having a good look around anyway. This is what I'm here for, to do all this. There's gammons, very common here. Yeah. A quick look at some of those from here. I'll go down there in a minute, I'll just see what I can see from the wall. other side to do. Tomorrow I'm going to the library at 10 o'clock, the museum at 10, and the archivist is getting me out anything I want. So I'm going to sort of attack the lovering stuff tomorrow. That's the plan tomorrow. I'm walking back up now because it's difficult to go. Well, I suppose I could do it upwards to do it properly. 
Let's just go down here and just do the new ones a minute. Another fag. <coughs> in the extended cemetery down the, up the road from the church and the pub and everything is the there were gammons. Died in the 1900s. Right, it's really a picture postcard type old Devonshire village really is. There's an old sort of churchy schooly building with a point which I think is now private. It's a private residence now. I'm walking down a very steep hill which I've got to walk up again in a minute. Not gonna be a, that is not going to be a joke on the way back up here. But I'd rather walk down here and take the car. Some big houses overlooking the bay. Some sheep. The sun is getting lower in the sky. I'm just having a look. The cemetery's up there somewhere. I'm just going to look. Then I'll walk my way back up. I have a pint of Guinness. I just want to walk down here a bit. I ain't going walking too far. Of course, I know where this road goes. It goes to Woolacombe. If I carried on walking this way, I would go to Woolacombe, which I will probably do another day. Since all I've got to do, well, I could do it in a minute, really. I drive around it with no guarantee. on grazing land. I'm going to have a look around the corner rather than um, walk up the main road. Just going to have a bit of a walk up here. Hello. You can bet your life I'm going to miss something, ain't I? There is a pub around the corner there I can see from here. to live, eh? There might even be a bit more of a village around that bit. Because the van's struggling a bit, I don't know whether to go down there in a minute or not. Especially if I'm going to have a pint of Guinness. There's a great big old house. Well, not that old. Stuck on the hillside and looks empty. There's a few of them like that. Then you've got some little tiny fisherman type terrace properties. If I can get out when I get up here. There's no mention of any of Zara's lot at Woolacombe, but I might, if they have got a church, I just as well go and have a look at it, and I really. This is the only problem with the late nights now. You're confined to the van after dark. There's not a clubhouse on the site. It's a very steep, dangerous walk down here. Look at the sheep in off big here. Great big pump thing there. Right, it's Thursday. I think it's the 11th of October now. I'm down in Devon, Morto, on the caravan site. I've just had my breakfast, had a shower, got myself organised. And I'm going to the museum for 10 o'clock to spend several hours in there. When I visited there yesterday, one of the reception people was telling me that he knew old Nicholas, Nicole Barbary, and what a character he was and how cantankerous he was as well. 
because he was telling me when he was much younger, the reception bloke, um, he was quite compassionate. He tried to help uh, Nicole Barbary once when he was climbing up a vertical perpendicular ladder um, near the docks. You had to climb up and then you had to lift up this bar in order to climb through onto the top of the dock. Well, he was about 80, Nicole, at the time. And this young bloke, I have got his name somewhere, I can't remember it on hand at the moment, but Robbins, that's right, it was the family Robbins. He ha um, handed his hand out to help um, old... Um Hold on a minute, just going to turn the tape over, um, turn the cassette tape over, because we're making an audio pod, and uh, all part of the excitement, here we go, let's hope something turns up on this side. Continuing, yeah, he held his hand out to help him up this perpendicular ladder off to get on top of the dock, and he, old Barbary swung at him. Said, oh, get off, you know, we don't want any help from you and all that. So the, the young bloke said, oh, that's the sort of character he was, a bit cantankerous in his old age, but still quite fit. Anyway, that's that. Um, I had been talking into this tape, but I didn't record anything. <laughs> anyway, I'm off to the museum. They've get, all allocated me a parking space for today, and then I hope to go around a few graveyards as well later on this afternoon. And then get back here before dark so I can have a, a walk round because apparently there's lots of nice walks around here. Over and out. Right, I'm going to actually stop there because that was the end of the Mortho visit, which is quite interesting for Zara's family history research into an Irvin, Lovering, Barbaries, and all that sort of thing. So I'll stop there rather than go on to another section. Over and out for now. This is Sheila in 2013, recording a cassette tape recording done in 2007.